and praise the Lord. So let's pray this morning. I want to look at a thought, <clears throat> excuse me, a thought um, that is really dear to me as well as one who is striving, extreme Christian graces. So Father in heaven, I pray your anointing upon your servant and upon your people today as we get our morning uh, morning word so that it, it, it will keep us. And even those who are feeling distressed and discouraged and disheartened, I pray that you will give us power in our lives over all the works of the enemy and that all things that are above our head will still be beneath the feet of our Savior. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. So I want to share this thought that, um, as I said, is dear to me because I too am in need of all the Christian graces. Trust me. And special good morning to those who have just joined us. So the blessed hope, stay with me now, that hope of the Christian. And again, I don't want to be long because, you know, it's just a thought, a crisp thought, and I would hear from you as well, all right? The, the second coming of Christ so the Christian is the blessed hope. And um, and it will really bring an end to what we call the great controversy. Peter says something interesting in the second Peter chapter 3 and verse 11. Stay with me now. He says in verse 11 of chapter 3, the book is second Peter. He says, seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved. He's talking about the second coming of Christ and the removing of all institutions and all things like that. He says, seeing that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of person ought you to be in all holy conversation and godliness? It's really a question. Um, and conversation doesn't mean you're speaking. Your conversation is your life. So seeing that all these things are going to come to pass, what kind of persons ought we to be? And then he says in verse 12, looking for and hastening unto the coming of the day, of God. In other words, not only are we to look for, but we are to hasten the coming of the Lord. And today, we want to see that the coming of Christ is not predicated upon the things that are happening in this world. We have a lot of things happening, a lot, I mean, a mighty lot of things happening. But it is dependent on the development of this extreme Christian graces. So we hear of Christian graces, behaviors and mannerisms, development of character. But God is calling for extreme development. We, we, we were not looking for that. You know, these extreme, um, we want to be distinguished from others. That's what character means. That is what defines you and make you different. So in Revelation 12, 17 and Revelation 14, 12, the people of God will be brought into extreme circumstances. So we need extreme grace to be exercised. In Revelation 12, 17, we are told that the dragon was wrought with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of a seed that keep the commandments of God and have the faith of Jesus. In Revelation 14, 12, we are told that the final saints will be those who have the faith of Jesus and keep the commandments of God. So I, I want to read this. I, I, if, if you would allow me just to read one passage just to make sense to us, all right? Because we are looking at the development of extreme Christian graces under extreme circumstances. So every day we are to develop character. I, I read this um, this text in 1 Corinthians 10 and verse 11, which says, there hath no temptation taken you. You know that text, right? That promise, but such as is common to man. Commenting on that, inspiration tells us that God measures every temptation. Every temptation that is to come our way, it will not go over our heads. It, it will not consume us. He measures it <clears throat> according to the level of faith. But anyway, inspiration tells us Christ is waiting with longing desire. Praise the Lord for the man of himself in his church. And when the character of God, and we know it, when the character of Christ shall be perfectly reproduced in his people, then and only then he will come. So God is not the, the coming of Christ the development of these things are really, they are waiting on the development of character. So when we see evil in the world, it will continue until our characters are perfected. And this is what I want to share with us. I want to give us this Bible account found in Second Samuel. You may have read it already, but today we're going to see it 
in, 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 in a new way. Um, because God is new every morning. This is a new manner. This is not the manner from yesterday. The yesterday from yesterday's manner cannot suffice because that is already gone. So in 2 Samuel 16, we pick up this account of this despicable man called Shime, Shimei. You may have your own pronunciation, but that's what I like. Shimei, right? S-H-I-M-E-I. Have mercy, Lord. All right. So in chapter 16 and verse 5, it says, And, the, and when King David came to Bahurim, behold, the events came out a man of the family of Saul. Now, we know the backdrop of the story. This is uh, Saul is dead. Of course, Saul's family are saying this is because of David and he took the kingdom and all that drama is going on. And added to that now, David is fleeing from his son Absalom. So it is at this juncture we pick it up. So it says, a man of the family of Saul, whose name is Shimei, the son of Gira, he came forth and cursed still as he came. And he cast stones at David. Listen to this, beloved. So David is innocent of this, of course, but this, this family member is taking, as it were, his own uh, revenge. And think about your circumstance. Sometimes you may be totally oblivious or innocent to a circumstance. But look at this man. He was really despicable. He came forth. Look at what he did. And cursed still as he came. And he cast stones at David and at all the servants of King David and all the people and all the mighty men were on his right hand and on his left. And thus said Shimei when he cursed, come out, come out, thou bloody man and thou man of Belial. No, you understand what he's saying, right? He's saying that you are son of the devil. He says, you know, and he's and the casting of stones in a particular way in the Hebrew culture meant a curse. It's like casting dust mm -hmm. upon him. So put yourself in that position, having done nothing to deserve this. You're already going through your moments of, of, of trial, your own son who would sleep with your wives and who would threaten your kingdom, who killed one of your sons. You know, you could imagine the drama. And on top of that now, you have Shimei said, come out, come out, thou bloody man and thou man of Belial. The Lord hath returned unto thee all the blood of the house of Saul. Now he is he is now justifying what he is what, what what he is doing. In other words, he is now throwing, as we would say in perhaps of the Caribbean, he's now throwing salt in his wound. He is throwing sand in his rice, so to speak. With all that is going on, Shimei has no mercy. Calls him a son of Belial, and he says, "Thou the Lord is now returning on thee all the." blood of the house of Israel in whose stead thou hast reigned and the Lord had delivered the kingdom into the hand of Absalom thy son and behold thou art taken in thy mischief because thou art a bloody man wow that is hot that is that is oh boy that is contemptuous and David is to deal with this now he is still the king um, he has men with him and he is innocent I want to ask you, what will you do? Think of it, think of it, brethren. Think of it, beloved. These are the extreme Christian graces that God wants us to develop. And it will be so beautiful when the Lord sees this developed to its maximum. He will then trust in his sickle. Hallelujah. And he will read. So David's men, of course, loved David to the, to the bone wanted to kill Shimei one time. And sometimes we are tempted to respond in kind and to fight back. Yeah, yeah, amen. Talking to anybody here today? Yes, man. Talking to us, right? Then said Abishai, the son of Zuriah, unto the king, why should this dead dog curse my lord the king? Let me go over, I pray thee, and take off thy head. But David in his despair you know, in his mind, he is saying, if you read the account, he's saying, you know, the Lord is sending this upon me for my own sins. When with the sin of Bathsheba, the, the way he dealt with Absalom in his early days and all that said, David said, in spite of all that, look at what David said, praise the Lord. Eh? Verse 10 says, and the king said, what have I to do with you, you sons of Zeruiah? So let him curse. And I want us to 
to keep that phrase in our mind. So let him curse. In other words, let the man say what he has to say. You know, it's not, I, I, I am accepting this trial. I'm accepting the, 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 um, what would have occurred in my own life if this is the retribution fit. I'm accepting it was a great man. And that is the spirit that God wants us to have. And I don't want to preach to you today. I, I just want to be calm, but this is so beautiful. It says, so let him curse. So brethren, we, we need to see that when the enemy comes up against us, sometimes of our own household, sometimes we are innocent. The, the first thing we want to do is to be tempted to respond in kind, especially if we are not guilty. But look at David, who really represents Christ. He says, so let him curse. Because the Lord said unto him, curse David. Who then shall say, wherefore hast thou done so? So he quelled immediately a retribution. David and his party then continued to walk. And Shimei continued to follow. He was cursing. You think, it, you think it's going to be easy? You think, we, you think we have it easy? Even now, some of us are going through this. Cursing and throwing stones and dirt at him. He f and, and the thing is, you know, the Lord has a way of resolving things. Still, with all that, Solomon was giving him enough opportunity to change his ways. He finally died the hand of Solomon. But all accusations coming against us, they are going to fall away and die. But it is within our best interest to keep our state and to behave wisely that we do not do um, return in kind what is obviously being given to us. What, what is your trial today? Who is your Shimei? Who is the person that causes you all this distress? You know, in the midst of the hammering down of circumstances, somebody now comes and, and accentuates it and makes it even worse by challenging you. We have to face that today. David said, so let him curse. We must now say, so let him curse. You know, inspiration tells us that when the Lord manifests himself, manifests himself in us, we will be able to say to the devil, get the hence. And all the power that he has cannot resist that command. And today, we need to pray the prayer of Christ. We need to say like David, you know, that is okay. You know, um, while those who are with us are willing to, to respond in kind because they see that it is, this is an advantage being taken of, of our brother, of our sister. And you will hear things like, you know, you sitting down there and taking all that and people even recommending, you know, if I was me, I would have done, you know, the, you know, the drill, you know, the narrative, but today we need to have the spirit of David. So let him curse. It is not a problem. And, um, the, 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 the master Jesus, he said this, and I want to ask Brother Vernon to allow me to share something with you. Just a short clip from a video in audio, but I think we need to hear it. And it's a series of videos by a, a, a behavioral analyst. And um, I will share the link probably in our chat. Matthew 5.43. It says, you have heard that it had been said, thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, love your enemies. You know, this is something that we read all the time. These are the Beatitudes, our attitudes to be like. Yeah. But I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Notice Christ is only saying what was done in David. Bless them that curse you. Brethren, let the man curse. Let the people have their say. One day, it is going to come to an end, but it is for my development of character because Jesus is coming based upon perfection of character, not upon last day events. He's coming based upon our characters. So that, that is how we can hasten the coming of the Lord. So today, we're going to bless them that curse us. You know, bless them that curse us. And not in a malicious way, you know, you're just going to pronounce blessings upon them. The Bible says, you will, you know, he calls a fire. These calls of fire represents God's presence. So when you bring them into God's presence, we know that there is hope even for those that curse us. Are we together, brethren? Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. 
and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you that ye may be children of your father which is in heaven let's see snow now what about jesus again and i i like this as i close and get ready to share that video clip hear this right first peter 2 21 it says for even here unto were you called because christ also suffered for us Listen, brethren, leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps. Listen to this. This is beautiful. So we want to tell Satan, get the hands, and he cannot come further. You want to say to those who are cursing us, we're going to bless you today. You know, as David said, let the man curse. Let people say what they have to say, brethren. We know the truth about the matter. You spend more time defending yourself and you get angry, you get bitter. Listen to Jesus now. Listen to Peter speaking about his Lord. He says, Who did no sin? Neither was guile found in his mouth. Who when he was reviled, oh hallelujah, he reviled not again. When he suffered, when he suffered, he threatened not. But what did he do? Commit himself to him that judgeth righteously. Praise the Lord. He committed himself himself to him that judgeth righteously. We need to start doing that. We need to not let our emotions get so mixed up and messed up. And then we are sorry for what we did. We have to now go through a whole long list of confessions and, you know, let, let's just say let the man curse. You know, some family member is going to come against you today. Let them have this way. I'm going to commit my soul to him that judgeth righteously i'm not going to threaten i'm not going to revile even satan when he was coming against christ the bible says he christ uttered no scathing rebuke he didn't start to blame satan and remind him of his past the bible says he who in his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree that we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness by whose stripes we are healed. So we want to be that people who would exemplify not just Christian graces, but extreme Christian graces. I want to ask Brother Vernon if he could kindly allow me to share um just a little part of this video. I think I think everybody should listen to this. If if it's possible, Brother Vernon, let me know. And um I, I'm not able to share. So um Okay. Yeah, okay then. Make me host, right? So brethren, just stay, just bear with me for about five minutes. It will be the best five minutes of your day. So I'm waiting on Brother Bernard to make me host. And then uh, Oh, you don't have the capable host. So who is the host of this? Um uh, Okay, okay, no problem. All right, so beloved, that's my thought for us today. But I want to share with you. I'm gonna put it in the chat, in your church chat. It's a series of seven videos, um, behavioral science, but it is powerful. I've heard it already, but that's not a problem. Hear it again. So I want to leave with us that thought this morning. One, do like David. Let the man curse. Don't stop him. You know, don't incite anything against him. He calls a fire upon the accuser. And how this is fire represents the presence of God. So when we leave somebody up to God, we are actually putting them in the best hands. God is going to change their experience as we continue to pray for them. We have the authority under God to tell Satan, get the hence. And all the power that he has, he cannot withstand that command, even from the weakest of saints. So extreme Christian graces are what God is expecting of his people. And um, this is the demonstration that heaven is awaiting on. Inspiration says with longing desire to see the development of these graces under acute persecutions. Inspiration also says um, we are not to become shaft over every real or imaginary thing that is done to us. Self is the enemy. Are we able to bear it? Yes, we can because Jesus did it. Are we able to deal with Ashimei today? Yes, by the grace of God. And let me tell you this, it is going to come. Before the weekend is over, somebody's going to testify to the glory of God that Shimei did show up. But you know what? We had the Christian graces. And more than that, 
we had extreme Christian graces to deal with that. So may God bless us today. May we not become a byword in the mouths of those who are non-believers. Let us always conduct ourselves wisely as David did on the trial from his son, from his household, having lost a couple sons already, having had his son threaten his kingdom, having to flee. And then on top of that, be chastised and being, being, being cursed. David said, let the man curse. Let us practice that today. Let them say what they have to say. You know, um, God is God is in control. All right. So God bless you today. But when I turn back over to you, yeah. Yeah, sure. So let, let's pray, beloved. Father in heaven, thank you for your word to our lives today. You know, we are not worthy, Lord. We are not worthy of all the or all that you bestow upon us, but Christ has made us worthy today. And Father, you want to fix our characters where it will be in a state where others will see us and come to know thee to whom to know his life eternal. So I pray for every person here today, every family represented. I want to lift up every situation, every circumstance, every violation that is done against God's people. I bring it before you today so that you would give your people the confidence that our God is with us. Forgive us for where we would have erred. And I know, Lord, you are in the business still of healing and repairing. So do that for us in a mighty way, even as we settle out settle ourselves into a, a, a committed trust with you i pray in jesus wonderful name amen amen blessed love to one and all happy preparation there you know i just thank god this morning that i was able to hear this and i just want to share with Reggie that <clears throat> <laughs> this morning, this one, this one hit me. This one real hard because I was caught off guard yesterday. You know, I was caught off guard yesterday. So I thank Lord for speaking to you this morning. Speak 